Donald Trump has repeated the worst thing he has done in this campaign. Worse than the smearing of African Americans or the self-congratulations over the Orlando nightclub shooting or even the display of madness as he petulantly backed away from the lifeblood of his campaign, birtherism. Worse than all that. Worse than anything any other candidate for president has done in our history. And it is the second time he has done it. And after he did it, he reminded everybody he did it on Twitter. And yet, you may have already forgotten it. Because within 24 hours, with the atrocity of his message already in the ears of those to whom it was music, Donald Trump did what he always does. To prevent getting called in by the grown-ups, he changed the subject. He did something else. He shot off his big bazoo about another topic, in this case about the terrorism here in New York. And suddenly, he got us yelling at him, as he always does, over something not quite as bad as what he had said the day before. Trump, you again dog-whistled for somebody to assassinate your opponent. You did it in a speech in Miami. Then you went back to a hotel and obsessed over what they were saying about you online like you were a 14-year-old, like you do every night and every morning, and there wasn't enough praise for the omniscient, omnipotent Trumpness of your being, so you dog-whistled again on Twitter. What kind of sick bastard are you, Trump? Again, predicating this on another one of your lies, that Hillary Clinton wants to eliminate the Second Amendment, I wish, as if somebody could, you said, I think that her bodyguards should drop all weapons, they should disarm, I think they should disarm immediately. What do you think? Yes, take their guns away. She doesn't want guns. Take them, let's see what happens to her. Take their guns away, okay? It will be very dangerous. Trump, what do you think those idiots out there think you meant? It'll be dangerous, Trump, because the Secret Service dropping at weapons will damage the floor somewhere? It'll be dangerous because without guns, the Secret Service wouldn't be able to protect the crowds from escaped circus animals. The people who heard you say, take their guns away, let's see what happens, will think you meant somebody should shoot her, see what she thinks of gun control then. And they will think that, Trump, because that's what you meant. Because that's also what you meant when you said it in North Carolina in August. If she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. You meant shoot her. You meant kill her. You meant assassinate her. And even when the former director of the CIA said that anybody else who said what you said would, quote, be in the back of a police wagon now with the Secret Service questioning him, you went back and you did it again one month later. Trump, you, you don't know this because it's not on Twitter at the moment, but the theme of this country's political history is not greatness, nor growth, nor compromise. It is assassination. President Reagan shot, survived. President Ford, two attempts to shoot him in a span of 17 days, not injured. President Andrew Jackson shot at point blank, both guns misfired. President Truman saved from being shot by White House police. President Nixon, gunman Arthur Bremer's plans were foiled by the Secret Service, so he shot George Wallace instead a month later. President Franklin Roosevelt shot at three weeks before his inauguration. Gunman Miss killed the mayor of Chicago. President Theodore Roosevelt shot while campaigning to regain the White House. President Taft, gunman apprehended along his parade route. President Clinton, gunman shot 29 times towards the White House, presumably thinking a man he saw on the lawn was the president. President Lincoln, shot dead. President Garfield, shot dead. President McKinley, shot dead. President Kennedy, shot dead. 13 of our presidents, Trump, 13 of our presidents, 30%, nearly one in three, shot and killed, or shot and injured, or shot at and missed, or about to be shot at. And you, three times in two months, you dog whistle to the worst dregs of this gun-crazed, death-wish society that the Second Amendment people should do something that guns be taken from her heavily armed Secret Service detail, that we should see what happens to her. When eight years ago Hillary Clinton merely mentioned that she had not ended her Democratic nomination bid yet because a previous Democratic frontrunner like Bobby Kennedy had been assassinated, she was excoriated for that. She was shunned. I shunned her. It remains her low point. And she apologized within hours the same day, Trump, 
and she never dog whistled for somebody to shoot her opponent as you did. And she didn't just change the subject to something else. She didn't do what you did. Enraged as you were that you had to admit to your lie about birtherism, you went out and brought up assassination the same night to wish to incite, to dog whistle, to do anything but repudiate and fight against physical violence against the political leader in this country is beyond despicable. With our history, with our political annals stained with the blood of everybody from Martin Luther King to Ronald Reagan to Harvey Milk. And I pity you, Trump, that you have so little of humanity or decency inside you that you could so cravenly and dismissively say it. Let's see what happens to her. But I know what should happen to you, Trump. That ex-CIA director, General Michael Hayden, was right. August 9th, after you did this the first time, because of, quote, the prevalence of political assassination inside of American history and how that is a topic that we don't ever come close to, even when we think we're trying to be lighthearted, if someone else had said that outside the hall, he'd be in the back of a police wagon now with the Secret Service questioning him. You made a call for violence against the other candidate for President Trump less than three months before the election. Then you repeated it two times, once on social media. And the Secret Service should now take General Hayden's cue. And you, Trump, you should be in the back of a police wagon now being questioned. And then, you know what? Let's see what happens. That's the closer. I'm Keith Olbermann. Watch this space.